Oh, hello. This is Mark Harian. Um, today I'm going to be uh, giving a couple of videos out uh, via YouTube and Google Classroom. Um, the first one's on the combined gas law, and then the next one will be on um, the ideal gas law. So I'm going to break it up into smaller chunks just because uh, it's a lot to take in. And, you know, I, I get we're not together to do this. So um, again, do the best you can. It's really just algebra. It's an application of algebra um, that you guys are doing here. And, um, you know, it, it, once you get the patterns down as, as anything with chemistry, the patterns are everything. So let's jump in. Uh, the combined gas law has, uh, all three variables in it that we've discussed so far, pressure, volume, and temperature, and, uh, they're all now variable so they can all change. So you've got three different things that can change. Um, this equation is the only one you really need to solve the other three. And, in normal circumstances on a test, uh, the equation sheet would just have this equation. So let me show you what I mean by that It's it, and how we actually can do this. So let's go to the next slide here. Um, if I cover up the bottom of the combined gas law, which you can see here, if I cover up the bottom, like I've done on these two, that's where the temperature would be. When we cover that up, notice which law we have. It's Boyle's law. So Boyle's law is just the top of the combined gas law. Okay. If I go to the next, uh, next slide, notice I've covered up the pressure. So when you cover up the pressure on the combined gas law, you get Charles law. So you really have, only have to memorize one equation for this. Okay. So, um, let's look at the last iteration of this thing. Um, you look at P1 and T1, notice the V1 is covered up. So if we cover up the V on the combined gas law, we get Guy Lussac's law, which is pressure and temperature. So with that one law, uh, that, that really makes it so you don't have to memorize anything besides one, one equation. And you don't have to memorize it because you'll get it on the test. But that's the only equation you would get on a test. Okay. Um, so let's look at a practice for this. We've got a combined, combined gas law practice. So again, when you're doing these, go through and label things um, in the problem. It really helps uh, when you guys are trying to do this stuff. So here I've got a volume, which I'm going to call V1. That's two liters, a temperature, which again is in the dreaded Celsius, get it into Kelvin. That'll be T1. And I have a pressure that's P1. And all of those guys are together. You've got commas, use your English skills. It'll come, it'll help here. And the and tying everything together. Temperature is raised to 25 degrees Celsius. That's going to be T2. And the pressure P2. And they're asking for the new volume, which is V2. So first, I, I start with my equation here that we have. Okay, then we rearrange it algebraically to solve for V2. That's going to give me uh, the setup that I need. So this is, I always recommend doing this. In fact, I require it on a test usually when we're doing this stuff. But show it with the variables first. Um, if you can set up the variables correctly, you'll plug in the correct numbers. If you labeled it up here, mentally labeled it if you're, you're good with that. Um, plug everything in in its correct position. So I go back up to my labels. I look at P1 and plug it in there and then everything else in that. Again, multiply the top, divide. I, I do multiply 1 times 2 times 298. Then I divide by 293. Then I divide by 2. Um, I don't even use parentheses. I just do it that way and I get 1.02 liters Okay, on this thing. So, um, you know, when you have three different variables to work with here, it's really important to set it up correctly with the variables first, then plug in the numbers. Otherwise, you're going to get lost, possibly plug in numbers in the wrong spot and, uh, you know, be a waste of your time, basically. It's always a waste of your time if you're going to get it wrong. So um, you don't want to do that. Uh, this one, let's look at this one because it's a temperature one. Uh, gas has a volume of one liter, so that's going to be V1. Uh, you have a temperature of 300 Kelvin, which is T1. That one's already in Kelvin. You're welcome. Uh, two ATMs is P1. And the pressure is raised to four ATMs. That's the second pressure. So I, I know this handwriting is hard. I'm doing this with a mouse. Uh, P2, I have a stylus. Hang on. Uh, P2, and the volume is dropped to 0.5 liters. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be V2. And it's asking the new temperature. It's also asking in Celsius. So we got to take that extra step at the end. So one, I start with my equation. Two, it's asking for something that's on the bottom. Temperature. Temperature is always on the bottom. If you get a temperature question, what do we do first? 
you got to flip it. Okay. So this is the flipped equation here. Um, once I do that, I've got to start doing my algebra. So these two guys are on the bottom, move them up to the top. Okay. These guys can stay and you get your T2 by itself, which is shown here in part three of this thing. Um, once I've got my setup algebraically done with the variables, I can plug in the numbers here. And when you do the math on this, this one, uh, usually when I do this one in class, it kind of makes people mad because the temperature doesn't change. And that's because of what's happening with the pressure. The pressure is doubling. Uh, the volume is going to half and they're inverses of each other. So you end up with everything basically canceling out. You get 300 Kelvin still. So there's no change on this one. Um, so it, 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 I guess it makes people mad sometimes, but they're fun to give you guys. Um, you know, it entertains me. Uh, 300 Kelvins minus 273 because it did ask for the Celsius on this one. So that's going to be 27 degrees Celsius. You know, it's a little bit above room temperature um, in this case. Okay, so temperature is not going to change on this one because of what's happening with those guys. So those are some combined uh, law practice questions. There are a couple of more that I that I put in there um, with the solutions. I'm sorry. Uh, for combined gas law, that's it. You will get some practice on a Google Doc uh, that I'll help you guys out with. And uh, that should be coming soon. The next video is going to be on the ideal gas law, and that's coming up soon here.